Okay. In the respiratory section, um, what, what, what these drugs will do in respiration, so the cholinergic, the cholinergic agonist drugs, all the cholinergic agonist ones, were causing, I'm writing this again, uh, dumbbells here, okay, D-U-M-B-B-E-L-S-S. This is a mnemonic for cholinergic activity, okay, agonist activity. So one B was of bronchoconstriction and the other B was of bronchodilation, okay. So they were agonists and they were constricting the, the lining of smooth muscles of the bronchioles and bronchioles. So here, when we are talking about the antagonists, the ones that perform the opposite action, here, the bronchioles will dilate, okay? So here, we will see bronchodilation. So you can give this drug to asthmatic patients, to COPD patients, but they are not a drug of choice, okay? So it's like we're just studying action, so I'm telling you, but we don't, you don't usually give these drugs. I've told you before also, the drugs you give to asthmatic and COPD patients are more beta blockers, short acting beta blockers and corticosteroids in chronic cases and leukotriene inhibitors, etc. okay? You don't give these uh, non-depolarizing nicotinic uh, or ganglionic blockers to, to the patients, but there is its mechanism of action on the respiratory tract too. So it causes bronchodilation. Also, it will decrease the bronchial secretions. Okay, it will decrease the bronchial secretions. So you can um, write these things, bronchial secretions. Okay, people? So when I will uh, when I will upload this PDF, I will write these things in front so, for you people so that you may get the point. But like you have to stay focused because I'm explaining you uh, by drawing the diagrams. Okay. Also. So now when uh, we come to heart, you sh if you remember dumbbells and then again cholinergic agonist activity and you know they were slowing the heart rate, they were negative ionotropic and negative chronotropic agents. They were causing bradycardia. So here, the antagonist will do its opposite function and they will increase your heart rate. So I told you when your heart rate is increased, that terminology is called positive. Which effect? Oh, chronotropic effect or ionotropic effect? So this will be positive chronotropic effect, okay? Not iono. Remember, when we are talking about rate, it is positive chronotropic, okay? And when we are talking about the conduction velocity, it is like increased conduction velocity, it is positive dromotropic, D-R-O-M-O, -O, okay? Positive dromotropic. And when we are talking about increased contractility, myocardial contractility, we are talking about positive ionotropic effect. And the rule was, this is a C and this is a C and you don't have to let them meet together, okay? Keep them separate. So positive Myocardial contractility, uh, increased myocardial contractility is positive ionotropic effect. Increased heart rate is positive chronotropic effect, okay? And increased conduction velocity, conduction velocity is positive dromotropic effect. So this, uh, this, is, about, this is about heart, okay? Um, and um, if we, like, wait a second, people. So, sorry, there was noise in my background that was disturbing me. Okay, so now uh, we have this um, 
mechanism on blood vessels okay so okay what what will what will all these effects will do these effects will increase the cardiac output okay they will increase the cardiac output uh, and your heart will be beat fast the all the processes of systole and diastole all that heart rate and everything will increase okay so let me clear this now we have the blood vessel thing so when we talk about blood vessel we have this vasodilation effect i told you uh, when i was teaching you the depolarizing drug at that time also i told you that we have this uh, all these antagonists dial all these antagonists have this action on our smooth muscles of our blood vessel lining okay and what they do is they dilate these blood vessels okay so when this um these all these drugs will dilate your blood vessels you will be going to hypotension okay your blood pressure will decrease but the important thing to remember here is the hypotension will be positional okay this is your mcq point the hypotension is positional or i can say you will be having orthostatic hypotension you you might have heard this word orthostatic hypotension what happens in orthostatic hypotension if the person is standing the blood pressure is different but when the person lays down in supine position the blood pressure is different and the difference of blood pressure and the blood, uh, and which blood pressure we are talking about we are talking about systolic blood pressure okay sbp so the the difference in blood pressure in a standing position and in the lying position is 10 mm of mercury okay this is orthostatic hypotension the difference is of 10 mm of mercury so remember this um point regarding blood vessels so we are done with git we are done with respiratory we are done with heart actions we are done with the actions on the blood vessels okay so what's left is um eyes genital system and urinary bladder but before going to that part you should know the two mechanisms two different mechanisms okay when i told you regarding dumbbells there were ss in the end one s was of sweating and i told you the mechanism of sweating was the uh blood vessels of the skin were dilating okay blood vessels of the skin were dilating so if here also i'm telling the blood vessels of the skin are dilating no i'm not telling that so make these uh, concepts clear i am these blood vessels which i'm telling you are not the blood vessels that are supplying to your skin you will see a central a central vasodilation effect that will decrease your blood pressure that will decrease the total peripheral resistance okay and then that will decrease your blood pressure ultimately but if i will talk about the blood vessels that are present on your skin okay the blood vessels that are present on your splanchnic areas that we call gi the gi blood vessels okay we call it splanchnic area okay and if i'm talking about the blood vessels that are present in all your mucous membrane okay these blood vessels will show a vasoconstrictive effect so you will not be seeing sweating in a patient taking these drugs because these are antagonists no sweating okay and what you will see you will see an ho denia which is 
opposite of diaphoretic. I told you yesterday also. We have two terminologies. Diaphoresis for sweating. Okay. Diaphoresis for sweating and anhodinia for the non-sweating. Okay. So remember this, that uh, the skin, GI, and mucous membranes will show vasoconstrictive effect, no sweating. And the central vessels of your body will be dilating and they will decrease the total peripheral resistance that is the blood exerting pressure on the walls of the arteries so that decreased peripheral resistance leading to decreased blood pressure hypotension but the hypotension will be orthostatic in nature okay so orthostatic is an important word to remember okay and i explained you what is orthostatic hypotension so so please be clear with these things okay now move to let's move to eyes okay what will be the effect on eyes of these antagonist drugs now first thing first we talked about increased lacrimation in cholinergic actions so one action will be decreased lacrimation that means your your uh, tear glands will not be producing tears, okay? So your eyes will become dry. So you will, the patient will have a side effect of, of dryness of eyes, okay? That we called xerostomia. So you should know the terminologies too. Dryness of eyes is called xerostomia, okay? So decreased lacrimation will lead to xerostomia. Okay. Another thing you will see in eye is midriasis. Because in cholinergic actions, you were seeing meiosis. Okay. Acetylcholine was responsible to cause meiosis. But when you're doing the opposite functions by the drugs, you're causing the pupil to dilate. And I have multiple, it's been like, multiple times i've shown you the mechanism of action of how a pupil dilate now this is a pupil this is your ciliary body okay and this is your iris okay and this is above here is your cornea and here is your trabecular meshwork let's say for example at this a region okay and same structures over here so what happens when your uh, when your pupil is dilating your your ciliary muscles your ciliary muscles are relaxing okay when your ciliary muscles relax this this position from here will become like this you see the difference in a contracted uh, see muscle the ciliary muscle in a contracted uh, portion the iris is long and elongated elongated and contracted the iris but when your ciliary muscle relax this iris this portion this iris okay becomes stretched, okay, relaxed, and dilated, okay? So you have to, you have to understand this mechanism of ciliary, uh, ciliary muscles with respect to iris. And then when it will move like this backwards, it will cause more area for your pupil to dilate. And that causes midriasis. So this is one mechanism of ciliary muscle. Another mechanism is this is your pupil and it has radial muscles. They will constrict. Okay, in order to maintain the stability. So they, the ciliary and the radial work in opposites. Okay, just as the detrusor muscle and the sphincter. Okay, for the uh, for the accommodation of light as well, 
and for the flow of humor as well because both of the things are do are are, are happening at one same time if both of them will relax it will block this pathway mind these things okay so these are the uh, these are the crucial points and i have like explained it on um, the real images of i multiple times while we are studying this uh, uh, cholinergic chapter so you will be seeing midriasis you will be seeing decreased lacrimation and uh, because because of the dilatation there will be a point because these are drugs like they can act for a longer period of time there, there will be a point when your when your trabecular meshwork will get blocked by the iris and it will cause the uh, aqueous humor not to flow when the aqueous humor will accumulate in this aqueous chamber the light from the cornea will not pass through the lens and the patient may complain of blurring of vision as well so the effect of these drugs is decreased lacrimation midriasis and then blurring of vision so remember blurring of vision as well okay okay and what else the patient can have because of these radial muscles these drugs will paralyze these radial muscles for a certain time okay so the patient will have cycloplegia so this these are all the actions of these drugs on these muscles so you only have to remember if you remember the proper concepts of uh, the cholinergic agonist drugs apply those concepts to the antagonist ones and you will see that all the actions are now opposite and how they are the concept is the same okay so are you able to clear are you able to understanding please respond we are we are about to finish this this lecture so please respond to me if you have any questions i can like answer and uh, the part which is left is urinary and genital system so another good good more good concept so any questions till now if no then i am like uh, going further okay 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 let's move to urinary and then general system let me change my color okay urinary so now again the same mechanism very important one this is your bladder this is your urethra this is your sphincters okay bladder muscle is called the trousser muscle okay now what is happening here at this level the receptors present for acetylcholine on this um, the trousser muscle the the non depolarizing antagonist drugs okay which work opposite to acetylcholine they will come and bind to this receptor and they will be uh, causing this the trousser muscle to relax 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 no pressure so you will be having no pressure in your bladder when your bladder the nerve endings that are present at your bladder that senses pressure and takes that uh, information to your central nervous system when they will not feel pressure you will not have an urge to urinate that is you will not feel the feeling of micturition and that thing will lead to urinary retention okay so urinary retention so this is uh, what you see in so now what will be the what will be the clinical contraindications of this drug anyone like anyone can tell me what will be the contraindications to use this drug if it is causing urinary retention in which patients you will not give this drug 
it can cause worse effects. Anyone know? I've told you people previously too. Okay, BPH. The peep, the patients, the patients who are who are having this benign prostatic hyperplasia, their 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 urethra, the male urethra is long enough, okay, and that is already compressed, and uh, you the patient is like, we don't give them uh, the drugs that causes urinary retention because they're already having urinary retention because of the compression of urethra, and we also do not give those patients. A cholinergic egg on us so you'll you'll be like not giving them both of them okay so this is a confine indication that will cause pain by producing more pressure and the patient will not be able to urinate and this drug will furthermore uh, causes urinary retention already like if if, if in the in the um, in the early phases of of bph the patient will have dribbling of urine okay and and if you're giving this drug to to uh, relieve the symptoms, it will not help. It will cause this uh, relaxation and cause urinary retention. So no feeling of micturation. So no, not no dribbling of urine. So this process will be eliminated by giving these drugs. But in a long run, the patient will undergo urinary retention, which is very painful actually. So in your clinical setups, when you will be seeing patients who are not able to pass urine, they are in a lot of pain. Okay, so remember these contraindications. Very important. And I and I, in your pre, in my previous lectures, if you have taken uh, the recordings or if you have taken the live classes, I told you regarding the surgeries and everything of uh, BPH. Okay, so I have I have touched those clinical aspects. Do please do listen the recordings. Okay, now let's move to the genital system. So in the genital, genital system, what will the, these drugs do? Let's say in female, we have this uterus. Okay, let's say this is the uterus, okay, of the female. So the, the uterine smooth muscle, the uterine smooth muscle, myometrium, we call it myometrium, okay? That will relax. These drugs will relax the uterine smooth muscles. So it will not cause contraction. So in a pregnant female, in a pregnant female, you can give these drugs in the start, but you cannot give these drugs later, okay? You can give these drugs in the start, but you cannot give these drugs later because uh, the female will not have labor pain then, okay? So, so there are, this is not an absolute contraindication to pregnancy. You can give it in the earlier trimesters, but you are not allowed to give in the later trimesters, okay? So it's harmful. So in genital system, its role is to relax the uterine smooth muscle which we call is myometrium, okay? So now here, we are done with all the actions of these drugs, and I've told you their clinical aspects too, okay? And um, our next lecture will be on um, the neuromuscular junction blockers, and we have two drugs in them. So... Tomorrow, we will study the neuromuscular junctions, uh, this, these drugs, succinylmethionine and the succinylcholine, okay? So I have like, again, I have just written the therapeutic uses and you, you will get all the explanation when you will take this lecture with me that how do we do intubation with this uh, succinylmethionine and succinylcholine? 
these both of these drugs are used by anesthetics in a surgical unit okay in the operation theater they do use these drugs still succinylcholine is used still for endotracheal intubation okay to paralyze the diaphragm and all that thing so i have i, I will explain you this mechanism also what is the role of these drugs in in electroconvulsive shock treatment given by the psychiatrists okay and malignant hypertension is very important concept to understand and also its effect with halothane and what does digoxin do when you give when a patient is taking digoxin and when you are giving that patient succinylcholine along with it what happens in that case how do you go in apnea and how hyperkalemia occurs in while using these this drug this uh, topic will is long okay it it seems very short like you can learn and do that your ratification for your exam but if you really want to understand the mechanism of action how these things are helping and how these side effects are occurring and what are the drug drug interactions okay so you have to take tomorrow's lecture uh tomorrow's lecture will be based on these uh two drugs succinylcholine and succamethonium the nmg blockers and then we then we will finish our cholinergic agonist and antagonist part both of them and uh, we will have time so we will study as uh, epinephrine synthesis okay epinephrine synthesis is remaining okay so i guess this is all for today's uh, lecture on pharmacology people and you can okay all for, to the people who are with me i i let me see who are who are there online okay maya rocks and aisha i think that all you three of you have all the previous lectures okay please do check uh, in your google drive uh, regarding the previous lectures you should you people should have uh, seven videos of anatomy nine of biochemistry eight of pharma and physio okay and where you will see this you will see this in uh, your google drive go to your google drive and then in your google drive you will see a uh, recent portion okay i may i may show you like wait a second i'm just stop stopping the sharing for some time so be with me let me show you where because people are finding uh, trouble in uh, i'm getting lots of messages that they are not understanding where to find the videos okay so let me share my screen now so you see this portion this is my google drive okay you see this portion here in my drive is all the stuff that you upload here by file upload or folder upload okay so when you will upload stuff you will see it in my drive and the stuff that you will open for example if i am opening this uh, pdf of neurophysiology it will arrive in my recent okay i i use these uh, pdfs yesterday so in yesterday it is it is present over there okay but in this section shared with me okay shared with me you will only see stuff that someone has shared with you so all the all the video lectures that i have shared with you you have to go in here okay go here and then you will see the um, and then you will see what what lectures are shared with you i may go to my another drive so so you see now these are the i have made these folders i have made these folders anatomy biochem pharma and physio so when you will go in anatomy you will see all these videos you should see all these videos okay there are eight lectures here okay all of them and not eight one two three four five six seven seven lectures and one is notes pdf okay and i have not uploaded today's lecture so one lecture will more will be more in here okay that is uh, due today then in biochem you will see 
eight. You will see eight videos, I guess. Eight? No. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, nine. Nine videos and one PDF. Okay? So nine videos and one PDF you will see in this section. And uh, add like nine plus two. So we have two, like, two uh, videos for today. I have not uploaded that. So it is lecture 5A and 5B of yesterday, vitamin B7, B9, and this B12. So today we studied vitamin C and vitamin B. So I have to upload that. So you will see that too here. Okay. And then in pharmacology, we have this four, we have this eight lectures. Okay. And this lecture, which I have just taught you. So you will be having these uh, two lectures also over here. And that will be uh, five. Okay. Lecture five today so lecture four was of yesterday so it will be five okay and in physiology we have this one two three four five six seven and eight we have these eight lectures from yesterday okay like from the previous week and yesterday so today's lecture is i will upload okay i, I have i haven't uploaded any lecture of today yet so please go in this shared with me section and then tell me if you have these videos or not. And if you have not, it, it, it will be better if you click the picture of your laptop screen and send it to me or from your phone, take the screenshot and send to me so that I may know which lectures you don't have and I will add you in them. Okay, people. So here I am signing off for today's lecture. And we will be uh, meeting in anatomy class. So we have an anatomy class today. I don't know if uh, what time it will take to end this recording. If you people are willing to take anatomy class, it is um, it is pre-recorded. So I don't need a break. I will just mute my mic and I will play that recording. It is uh, already recorded i recorded it already because from the phone so please tell me in chat in messages that do you want to take that uh now like right now along with this or we will like end this lecture and then start that recording please tell me If you're ready to take it now, it's okay. Or if you want to take it in recording, I will just upload it in recording. Because I don't have to give that lecture live. I have recorded it already. It's complete arterial supply on upper limb. Students. What? No. You will take the recording. Okay. What about you, Rox? So I will end this lecture, right? I will not like sit here. I will end this lecture if in that case. What about you rocks and what about you Maria? Please respond me. Okay, Maria is also taking the recording. So what about you, Rox? Lecture. Right. So let me show you. This is a recorded version and how it will look like. Just.
So I'm just sharing the screen with you people to show you how it looks like. Share. Who just entered? Uh, okay. So Manju, you are late. You are late for 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 pharmacology class and. See, this is uh, this is this is the lecture I pre-recorded. Okay, so this is a pre-recorded lecture. It is of forty-seven minutes and thirty. It is forty-seven uh, minutes and thirty seconds. So I I am not like sitting here today for the anatomy uh, class. If you want to take it up, take it up in the recorded version, please mute your mic. Um, if you want to take it as a pre-recorded version, uh, we can. I will upload it, okay. And if you don't want to take it as a pre-recorded version, I will play it, and you can take it right now. So up to you. So that is what I'm asking you people. It, it's 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 recorded by my phone, so it's done already. Please respond me. Let me stop this recording.